Yo, what is going on guys? Real Dallas in here with a different video. We're doing an interview today with my boy Chance. Um, we actually work together, which is lit. We're John Reed fam out in this bitch. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, my guy. You're actually the first interview that I've had for this channel, so... Welcome. That's lit. Welcome in, man. Um, so anyhow, yeah, so Chance is a Greek god out from, I believe, like California or Seattle, whatever the case is. Um, Chance, tell them a little bit about yourself and also drop your Insta handle just in case you want to get some followers at some point. Yeah, so my name is Chance. Uh, my Instagram is Chance Krimert. There is a space between it. Uh, let's see where to start. I, uh, I just moved here from California. I spent the last handful of years living in L.A., and then I, uh, I moved out here in July. It's Hell been yeah. A crazy ride, man. Hell yeah. So where in California were you from? I lived in LA. Uh, more specifically, I lived in Venice Beach. Uh, oh. Did you ever go to the original like, Golds? I've been there one time. It was really packed full of really jacked dudes. Probably guys who were like, get out of my fucking face, I'm filming. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they probably could have benched the car I was driving, which at the time was a Kia Soul. So. Oh, Kia Soul? Shit. I dated a girl with a Kia Soul once. Yeah, Solus, that's what I call it. Solus. <laughs> I had a Kia Forte when I was like 18, and I got the brakes replaced on it, the brake pads and the rotors, and it literally fucking crashed like after I did that. So Sounds about right. I never got to sue them either because the people who replaced them didn't put them on back, right? And so when I hit my brakes, it like went kunk, kunk, kunk. <laughs> It just didn't oh, fucking damn. Work. That's why you don't get a Kia. <laughs> Honestly, it was a reliable car. It went fucking fast, but now I have a Mitsubishi, and I don't think it was a even trade up to be honest um so hell yeah how old are you by the way i am 25 25 living the fucking dream and so i know you're a model right yes. tell us about it tell us about what you do um so i'll kind of start from the beginning i i did everything kind of freelance as most of your typical instagram people do it um and then I, I signed an, onto an agency, I think, a couple months ago. I think back in January was, like, my official entrance into it. Mm. Um, and that was great. You know, they fly me out to both coasts, East and West Coast, to do shoots. Um, and it's, it's a great experience. Can you disclose any of the work that you've done for companies? Or do they keep that, like, top secret? Um, no, it's not top secret. I, uh, I don't – right now, I don't – have anything lined up for for companies but to kind of give you an example um of the people they work with is they just finished up a, a shoe with dior mm. so there's um a lot of potential to be working with a lot of, a lot of big name brands here coming yeah absolutely like, i mean you can like get cologne or whatever it is that you're I mean, I don't know if they sponsor you or whatever <laughs> like just start sending you cologne <laughs> yeah. and shit yeah like, perfume yeah i mean get some cologne would be nice Hell yeah. That's what, that's actually badass. I was always wondering how it, what, you know, what it took to like be a model. I had a buddy that was like, um, when we were in middle school or whatever the case it was, um, his name's Grayson. Shout out Grayson Sneed. If you ever watch this, bro, I'm going to hopefully get him on the podcast or whatever the fuck this is. Interview, meeting, video. <laughs> um, anyhow, he, he worked for like, uh, something Dawson here in Dallas, Kendall Dawson or Kim Dawson. That's what it was. I think, um, anyhow, I never exactly knew how to do that shit, but um, I think it's really badass. Honestly, I've, I've never, never done it, but I mean, I feel like really it, gives simple. You, it gives you good experience though. Right. Like, you're like it cool. does, it gives you good experience and kind of pushes you to better yourself. Cause that industry is very picky with the standards. Exactly. So you gotta have like a chiseled, like jawline or make sure that you're like, you don't have like a beard, like a neck beard like this. <laughs> no, you, you can have a beard. You just can have a beer belly, beer That's belly. Oh shit. Kind of their thing. Honestly, I don't even know how the fuck people get past like the bottom two packs. Like, you know, you know how like most models have like a six pack, like washboard abs. You're like, how do you get the the bottom abs to fucking shine? Is that just genetics? Know, you think dude. it's a it's a hard thing. I mean, it's your diet right there, man. As uh, you should know, it's a uh, very true. Uh, your fitness and your diet go hand in hand, and you gotta be consistent. Damn. So, what's your diet like? What do you, what do you eat in a day? Oh, you know, that, that ranges, I eat a lot of protein. I eat a lot of eggs. Um, I you go like through like half a carton of eggs in one egg day. And stuff. Uh, and I eat a lot of beef, eat a lot of broccoli, a lot of chicken and rice, a lot of protein shakes. Hell yeah. 
So do you ever, do you ever fall off of that? Like, do you ever like go get just like Chinese food or some shit and Oh yeah. I mean, I definitely will go have a cheat day. I don't like to call it a cheat meal because I can't do that. Oh yeah. I'll go eat a couple double doubles from in and out or uh oh, fuck. Okay, bro, or... tell me your in and out order, because I don't know. Since you're from California, I literally I grew up on like water burgers. So people say it's you know, people from California are like, we have like a war going on. And I always tell people, I'm like, bro, if you've ever been drunk as fuck at like one AM or two AM coming back home from you know downtown Dallas or Austin, like my Texas people know their water burger or <laughs> And it's like basically the best thing ever. But I hear like people in California have the same thing, like in and out. Like you're like going at 12 a.m., you know, 1230, go get your in and out. So what is your in and out order? Yes. So what a burger is trash. I'm gonna put that out there for everyone who loves it. Um, <laughs> no, but in and out, I'll go get two double doubles animal style. Uh, and then I will either do that protein style, which is just the lack of a bun. They put, they wrap it in lettuce. Which okay. Is, as good but uh, you do that or uh i'll get animal style fries uh which is like like a cheesy like oniony like dip that they pour on top of it. it's really good it's like thousand island something like that but i would recommend next time you go to in and out get the double double animal style and get the animal style fries it'll be big carb load but you can get a good workout in like four hours later oh yeah i think I've, i think i've had animal style double double i haven't I think I tried the fries. The fries taste like cardboard, though, to be honest. I don't know exactly what the fucking problem is with that. Oh, we lost Chance. Chance, get back in here. Well, anyways, guys. In and out. Apparently, it's good. <laughs> but I don't know about I'm the back. fries. You're back. Oh, we got dropped from the call. I'm back. There we go. Um, so anyways, like, so how do people eat the fries though? It tastes like cardboard to me. <laughs> That's why you get the animal style. Yeah. Uh, it kind of adds a little bit of flavor to it, but. Should you get them well done though? Cause I hear like, I like, I'm confused. Like, Cause like you eat like McDonald's fries or like Whataburger fries. And again, guys, this is a fucking health, healthy channel. We like eat fucking good here. Like chicken and rice almost every single day. So when we're talking about getting in and out and Whataburger, don't fucking go out and get this shit like every two seconds. Like. This is for special occasions. Don't overload yourself. So how do you eat these fucking fries? Like, how do they not taste like McDonald's or something like that? Like, people really like these things? Honestly, I mean, yeah, the fries are kind of bad. But you just got to get a get a vanilla milkshake. Just dip them in there. Oh, that's true. I used to do that with Wendy's. You get, like, a chocolate frosty as kids. Oh, yeah. Doing all that shit. Hell, yeah. Well, all right. Enough about fucking junk food. But um, anyhow, man. So... You came to Texas. Um, I know you're you're like dating somebody right now, right? Like you got a you got a girl. Nice. Did you did you move down with her or like did you just move down to Texas just on your own? Like how did you get over here and you know why? Yeah, she she followed me here. Um, I know we we both work the same job now, but I moved down here for tech. I moved uh, worked for property management up until I started working at the gym here. Oh yeah. Um, she followed me down here and it's been history ever since nice absolutely so whenever you were in tech like you did property management stuff so like what what kind of tech exactly yeah so the company created a software that pretty much majority a good not majority but a good chunk of america uses for property management if that's like hmm. airbnbs or just like your typical apartment complexes from okay. small to luxury um yeah. So did, did I, you do like sales or anything like that? Or were you just strictly? Like, no, I, uh, I worked with property managers around the country. Um, cause there's a software that's, it was very, it's like an onion. There's so many layers to it and then I had to be able to help them and work with them in it. And it ranged. It wasn't just like, Oh, how do you like check someone in? It's like very heavily accounting based. Hmm. Um, so a lot of moving numbers. I feel that. So you just, you got tired of that and you're like, I'm going to go do something fucking fun <laughs> well yeah i'm actually i'm in the process of getting my real estate license because i realized i wanted to stay in real estate but i didn't want to be on the the number side of things i didn't want to be the property manager i wanted to be the one selling the properties yeah absolutely so that's, that's where i'm working towards right now okay do you think you're going to do it in texas or do you think you're going to do it in another state um i'm going to try to split it I know that you can kind of get agreements between states, but Texas is ideal right now. Property is hot, but California, 
um, Florida, Montana even. So like if I can kind of spread around and um, be able to sell properties there, that, that'd be the dream. Yeah, Montana's badass, dude. Honestly, if you get one in one state, you just practice there, I guess, and like get on your feet and get running. My mm. sister did it in Oklahoma. It's like fucking easier up there, but you don't make as much bank. But like at the same time, you get that practice. So whenever you're ready to go to another state, you just kind of read up on their laws and re-innovate or like just buy it out and then Airbnb it. You know, she's just like yep. sitting there making money um, for the most part. Like I think my, my mother's got like s- literally like six properties now or something like that. She's closing on a, the next one up there and somewhere in like Durant, Oklahoma, like next to a casino. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, I mean, it's a smart idea. You know, real estate honestly is like, one of the best, honestly. It'll always be here. People are always going to need to buy and sell houses. Exactly. Until we're like, literally like city runs everything and we're out of forest. <laughs> yeah, literally. Hopefully that doesn't come anytime soon though. World, world doomsday. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. So, um, so honestly, this channel really is just about like advice for guys or like whoever watches this shit, like at some point in the future, when the channel grows, like I always just like to tell, you know, a little bit about my life story and then like basically what I learned from said story and like talk about it. Um, so I want to dig in a little bit and be like, how, what exact struggles do you deal with? Like right now, like at your age, being a man, like how do you see the world and, you know, do you have any struggles? What are you working on right now? It's a great question. I think, uh, a struggle for me personally, but I think it could apply to practically everyone, especially men, is the the view social media has on people's lives. Mm. Um, that's something that I, I struggle with, not necessarily with me, but understanding it and seeing how other people react to it. Is social media is a highlight reel of your accomplishments. Yeah. People rarely will post their failures. Mm, and true. there's a lot of people growing up right now seeing social media as this is how life is supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. Uh, You're not supposed to have struggles. And if you don't have any struggles in life, you're probably not going to get very far. It's true. um, Just because you got to grow through what you go through. True. Um, True. What, what social media do you usually use? I mean, I know everybody's like on Insta right now. It's like the biggest, a, the dating, the biggest dating profile in the world right now. You know, a lot of people think it's like Tinder and, fucking bumble all that shit no like instagram's literally like the number one dating app if you like have a sick insta profile basically like you can go out and date whoever you want but also not only that but like i know what you mean about people posting positive shit i do the same fucking thing i'm like fuck yeah like watch me lift this fucking heavy ass weight like (laughs) watch me you know have have fun watch me laugh the good moments instead of like you know posting on there and i've done it in the past right like as soon as you post something like real almost or like something that might be a little bit negative in your life basically like it it gains traction but then at the same time you feel like a little bit weird about it because like people are like judging you for those like things instead of judging you for being the happy person that you are i guess yeah i mean not not the shit on it but i mean definitely post great stuff like post your good content but also keep it realistic yeah like we all have bad days and some people i know they do it for attention because they just need that uh I don't know what the word is the not the affirmation validation validation from yeah. people mostly um, mostly a lot of women <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean honestly like everybody likes a little bit of validation right like that's not a bad thing like you know sometimes you need to feel validated make sure that like people f- fucking like you a little bit you know like and if you don't feel like if you don't feel the need for people to like you then you're a fucking psychopath to be fucking honest like a lot of people are like you know, they, they'll sit there, go through life and act like validation's not important to an extent when like, it's not everything. Validation's not everything in the world. It's legit. Like, like if you don't care about your self image in front of other people, then there's something wrong with you. Like that's like, what do you, like, how do you have any drive? Like I could just sit here and be a fucking hippie and go sit on 35 and like sit there with a sign you know and just like quit life basically but at the same time though it's like it's those moments where you get validation for other people to kind of keep going on that totally man i definitely see that shit going on the validation with the at least the women in terms of that so so anyways like so i i hear your struggle with that so what is your take on like masculinity and femininity in the world today like based on social media or like what you're seeing like what are the struggles that men and women are kind of facing but like 
not only that, but men, since we're men, you know, what are we doing and looking at in the fucking marketplace right now or like dealing with girls and their shit or shenanigans? What do you see? That's a great question. So I'm very traditional and kind of old school when it comes to like traditional masculinity. Oh, you're hearing my cat right now. Oh, yeah. Dude, my cats were fucking doing the same thing. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, it's a weird thing, especially with social media right now and like just kind of how i see it is i've been seeing a lot of things out there that are trying to threaten your normal like masculine male mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, was, like i feel like social media today has now tried to make it to where every male should be like a, a beta male and you need to be offended by words and Absolutely. you should just take the easiest way in life um and i could not disagree with that more mm -hmm. i think that you need to have these traditional values of standing up for yourself you know having boundaries because i feel like nowadays people just they don't want to cancel culture is a real thing right now and i think if you're not going with like the mainstream let's be a beta male and really I've, I've, in my opinion, I feel like there's a lot of feminine men out there now, oh, which yeah. it's not a problem, like to each their own, but I feel that they're trying to push this whole, like becoming a weaker person on, on every male out there. Yeah, exactly. Like, 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 like there's a the lot knee, of things. Like bend the knee to everybody else. And like, instead of being like your own fucking man, you know, it, it's almost like, competition like you have to like compete with other males in society there's no way about it right like like you know it doesn't matter who you are you can be friends and cool with people but at the same time though like you need to have enough drive to you know a compete with the other you know alphas whatever you want to call it i don't necessarily like i, I use obviously those are like placeholder terms for like high value guy and like low value guy for the most part right you know you sit there with like red pill blue pill whatever the fuck you want to call it basically betaization alphazation all that good stuff so um, with like beta males in today's society, right? Like I, I can trustfully say I was a beta male at some point. I got the, Oh, uh, we've all been there. Everybody's been there. Like, you know, fucking texting Sally, you know, at midnight being like, where are you, babe, 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 don't break up with me, babe. Oh my God, babe. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. see, you seen uh hot rod. <laughs> I have seen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> babe. <laughs> babe. <laughs> Great. Um, no, I feel like, I feel like that's an actual issue, you know, and I, and, you know, I talk about this at work, right? Like I, I actually try to maintain as much frame as I can to not like, you know, make myself a little bitch, you know, if I, if something goes wrong, right. We all know there's people at work that trigger that shit out of me. But at the same time though, it's like, you, like at the end of the day, it like doesn't fucking matter, dude, you know, um, your, you know, I guess job, not, not your main job, but like to be masculine in today's presence, like is to reject modernity, basically reject femininity in terms of that being who you are as a man. Um, and I, and I feel like if you don't succumb to, you know, like bend the knee and like, you know, please ma'am, please like, you know, take my hat off. Like, you know, please fucking validate me as a man. Like, Oh, I'm, I'm doing everything for you. Like, if you don't do that, like bitches, like, we'll just, act like you're like the worst human being and like they'll sit there and, and, and I don't know, they'll, they'll soak it up from all these guys. Right. But in the real long game, if you do that, like the, at the end of the day, you're, you're a low value to them because they don't, they don't look for that. At least women in general. Yeah. Something I've realized and especially being in a relationship now mm -hmm. is women, they, not all of them, but they like to say one thing when they really mean another thing. Mm. And I think women like the idea of having options when it comes to, to men. But really what I think, I can't speak for all women and all yeah. men, but I yeah. feel like a lot of people want this traditional like image of like the man is the the protector and like he's the more dominant person in the relationship whereas the woman is more of a like a like a, i wouldn't say like a stay-at-home mom but yeah, there's more different. like 
like I don't I don't like how today they're trying to compare like oh like men need to do this or women need to act like men to do this and I personally think that we're they're entirely different different people and there's there's things that each person is good at and I mean I'm sure I'll probably get some hate on that because like and, and don't don't get it wrong it's not like women need to be in the kitchen like that's not it at all yeah exactly but there are traditional values that I think help men become more masculine and women stay feminine and I think that's kind of getting lost with social media and the whole like everyone needs to have their validation moment yeah I think it's I mean I think it's like really the start of you know because I do a lot of research studies on like intersectional dynamics and basically what the fuck's going on with our society right now and really a lot of this stems from feminism or like boss bitch movement or like be your you know call her daddy, you know, whatever the fuck it is, like all that shit in the world is like, it's cool to some extent. And like, you know, obviously some girls need to like have a hobby and do something, but you know, it's kind of weird because it turns from like gossiping and like talking with other women about just like relationships, all this stuff to like, now men are shitty, men are garbage, men are like all these things that we're because like we're the problem we built society and that's why it's so shit or whatever the fuck but you know i at the end of the day i think feminine like whatever that feminist movement or boss bitch movement i think it's just completely ass backwards i'm like i don't think that that makes anybody happy you know like you know and you see it a lot today in like single mothers like you know i see it in my own mom like my mom was like a victim of being a boss bitch like you know she's like 50 something years old now She's totally single. She can't find a fucking dude out here in the world because most of the guys at her age now are probably fucking like either like at least the good ones are fucking gone or have girlfriends or, you know, they they just live a completely different lifestyle, like fucking bitches all day long. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Doing whatever. But, you know, at the same time, though, like that's the prod, you know, that's like an example of it. You know, even, you know, nobody's safe out here. (laughs) Nobody's safe. (laughs) Nobody's safe, bro. So, um. So basically in, in today's terms, like with all that, with guys being like beta as fuck, like what can like guys do to, you know, if they're struggling with being like, you know, a little bitch syndrome, how can they turn it around in their lifestyle? Like what would you give them advice on? Uh, I think that there is a lot of things that people could fix and I don't think a lot of it's going to be taken very well, but I think a stop following celebrities and movie actors and actors on on social media like if if someone tells me their inspiration is kim kardashian get out of here that's a red flag like you need (laughs) like come on like she literally sucked a dick and got famous yeah exactly that to me like you need to have good inspiration and like mentors in your life um yeah like one of one of my favorite authors he wrote a book um his name is john krakauer he wrote a book about Ernest Shackleton, which you may have seen it in the news. They found his his ship in the Antarctic Sea after like a hundred something years. Mm, no, I didn't hear but, that. Um, tell me more. Tell me more. What's, what's going on with that? Oh, so that, that book was essentially he, uh, and this is this is something I find inspiration in because of the, the story he tells. So he, Ernest Shackleton, oh, back in the day, probably more than a hundred years, definitely more than a hundred years ago, he put an ad out to all the guys around the local area saying, Hey, uh, I want to do an expedition to the to Antarctic, like Antarctica. Um, at the time that was like, not a thing, I like, guess very much undiscovered. And he's like, it's going to be shitty. It's going to be terrible. You're most likely going to die, but if we make it, you're going to go down in history. And long Damn, story short, fucking legends, <laughs> long story short, he and all his men, they had a terrible time, but they all survived. Um, mm-hmm. they lost the ship and it was, it was terrible. But it's just kind of back to what I was saying is you need to find motivation from good people in your life that aren't just doing it for the views. Yeah. Um, so find find someone who's like does something that like you want to remember them for. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that honest, and another controversial thing is quitting porn. I mean, as as much as people love it because it gives you that dopamine rush to your yeah. brain. You need to stop that. Stop that. Go to the gym. Work out every day. Drink a gallon of water. Yeah. Um, educate yeah, yourself. Good. Like Absolutely. people, people. If you come home from your job and you put on Netflix immediately, 
and you're not working on your self goals, like you're going to get nowhere in life. And I think if you have something that you can work towards and eliminate a lot of these negative things that bring, I'd say our vibration down, like you'll be better for it. Absolutely. I agree with totally with the fucking porn thing. Like I actually have, you know, the buddy that I'm going to be interviewing after this, uh, Casey. Um, so he actually lives in Austin. We met through the gym. He was a personal trainer and we just hit it off one day. Cause like him and I basically have the same goal of like, you know, f- go follow him at Goka lifestyle. You guys will see this in the next video whenever it comes up. Um, but anyhow, uh, Casey's really good about like the no fab. He like really truly believes like no fab gives you like fucking superpowers. And like, I agree. Um, like I didn't realize, you know, and I'll just go into like my, a little bit of my personal story basically with this is like, I was a chronic masturbator porn addicted little fucking fiend for like the longest time. And, uh, I didn't really, you know, since I quit, like I've quit for good. Like, I don't, I don't even feel the urge to do anymore. I don't feel like it's necessary. Like I, I see what it did, you know, mentally and detrimentally to my life just in terms of like, you know, like all day you're like cuckolding yourself basically and watching other dudes fuck women that you want to fuck, you know, right. in order to get off on your own self. Like, and then all of a sudden, like you feel guilt and shame after that. Cause it's like, at the same time, it's like you're tricking your body into thinking that you're having sex. And so at the end of the day, when you're not having sex and you come to the realization of post nut clarity, which every fucking guy gets, you're going to be empty as fuck. You're going to be like, damn, like I feel like shit now because like I don't have a woman here with me. Cause like after that, like, and you have an actual like emotional connection after you, you, you have sex with somebody like you have like that after little thought, like guys usually just tend to like kind of reject and want to relax after that. Cause obviously, you know, we're doing shit like all day. Like that's honestly some of the only times that we get to relax is basically getting it on with our fucking girls, you know? Um, if, if you think about it, like how sad is it that we're getting off to a pixelated screen? Oh yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, that, we're, we're tricked. And especially if you're looking to be in a relationship one day and be that masculine man and have a, a very feminine female in your life. Like that's to me, if I was a girl and you, all you did was jerk off to a screen that would be a turn off. Oh, absolutely. But it also kind of fucks up like your, your energy levels. Like, um, you know, I, I think so. So me and Casey kind of did like this little talk once and he was basically telling me how, like, when you keep busting a nut, you like basically lose energy. Like they, they start to think about it as like, and, and I, I believe this is true. Like whenever you hold in your fucking nut, basically you have so much more energy to do whatever it is the fuck that you want to do. Like I sleep better. I don't like, you know, feel the urge to like have to do it to relax and go to bed at night. Like all that shit was a problem back in the day, but it also, it like, ha- it, it's almost like this weird effect. Like girls can like smell it on you. Like they'll, they'll be like talking to you for a second. And then all of a sudden there's like a disconnect. Cause you're like, not hungry for it you're not hungry for actually chasing them because like all your energy is pretty much just depleted on the fucking oh yeah i mean your confidence that you use last night. <laughs> your confidence goes way up and like when you're when you eliminate like guess lack of a better word self-pleasure yeah. um i even take take three or four days and stop and you'll realize like wow my energy levels are better i'm more focused um more yeah. confident and, and it's better for your workout. Like if you go in your workout and your your very your testosterone's really low because all you do is jerk off in your bed before you go to the gym, like you're probably not gonna be seeing the gains that you wanna see. Yeah, exactly. Um yeah, I have I definitely I definitely believe in that. It's, I mean it's a good tip, honestly. Like um but yeah, I think that um you know, the more that you start to take care of yourself as a man, like other than fucking, you know, no fap, whatever the fuck that movement is just in general, you shouldn't do that shit because honestly, like you should crave to want to have that connection in person and fuck in person. Like you should, like like, you should be hungry for it, you know? And like at the same time though, is like, don't just go and bust a nut on any fucking girl. You know, like, uh, I have that issue too, where I, sometimes I'm just like, I just want to bust a nut on them and then like never talk to them again. At the same time though, you should also be careful about that because it's like, you're kind of giving them your energy at the trade off. Right. So like, again, like this is where it kind of comes back to like the ma- the traditional masculinity whenever you have a girlfriend or like long-term girl that you can kind of like connect with or you know you have a few of them that you trust that are actually genuinely good girls like you need to vet them for that as well because i mean 
if you're just like, I mean, it's almost like, do you like, if that's the only energy source that you really have as a man is like holding in your fucking nut for the most part. Like, do you just want to go around giving it to girls that like literally don't fucking deserve it and who are just attention whores or girls who are literally just like not doing shit with their life besides some, some yeah. fuck shit. <laughs> I mean, and no one's, no one's perfect. Like true. No one's ever perfect. There's a, there's a book I highly recommend reading. It's called, um, I should have pulled up on my phone cause I always yeah. mess up the exact word. But it talks, it's called Chasing Excellence by Ben Bergeron. Mm, um, yep. And it basically talks about there's no such thing as perfection, only the path to excellence. Yep. Um, and it's and essentially it's just like don't compare yourself to others. You only can be better every day by focusing on yourself and what you can fix from days past. Exactly. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's like the thing is, I think that today, like, you know, coming stemming off of all that, right? Like, I think today the real issue with a lot of guys is that they're just like not actually motivated and they don't actually want change in their life. Like they're actually like accepting of mediocrity. They're accepting that their cert, their situation in life. And I think those who really see where they're at and have a very realistic point of view can kind of like catch themselves. And, you know, I, I watch a guy named Rich Cooper too. He says the same exact thing. He, you know, chasing excellence is the perfect example. He says, don't chase women, chase excellence instead. Because the problem is, is like whenever you chase women, basically you, you literally are paralyzed. You it's basically you get into this stage of like one itis where you're only focused on like pussy. And instead, like you need to think overarching, like you need to like be on the mission like you need to have the view, the perception in your mind that the mission is far away, your goals are close, and that women are just like the side pieces to the addition to that road that you're on. Well, right? here's I agree with you, but here's here's something I think everyone should take a take a few minutes every day to think about is mm -hmm. what are you doing long term? Because yeah. most people, I guarantee you, they don't have a fucking clue what they're gonna do next week. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you talk to go talk to some people at the gym or go outside wherever you work, and if you ask ask them like, "Hey, what are your goals? Like, what do you do? You have a five year plan? Like, what do you want to accomplish instead of just living day to day?" Uh, yeah. Just because a lot of people, I feel like they expect things to change, and something that's really big right now is the whole manifestation thing, which definitely mm -hmm. it's a real thing. Manifestation is a real tool that people need to use. Yeah, but you need to follow through with action on that too. Yes. And I think that if you come up with an idea of like, hey, this is what I want to do in five years. This is what I want to do in a month. Like as long as you have a plan and like I like I said earlier, like have a mentor, have real people that are inspirations to you. Mm -hmm. um, and also, also quit alcohol. I mean, I, I used to drink a lot in college and I, I hate it now. Like I just despise going out and wasting my money and feeling hungover. Yep. Like it's destroying your gains. Um, it's and there's just no point to it. There's a lot of things in life I think right now that have been, in my opinion, designed to keep people at a lower level. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I'm always for like you know. I think every guy has to have like a vice at some point, whether it's weed or something. Like you know, for me, it's like having like a beer or two, maybe at home just to relax, or like a glass of wine. Like I actually like wine a lot, but I think more the more that I've come to understand you know, alcohol just in general, like I, I obviously despise that it, you know, kills your gains or whatever. But for those who like, obviously can't smoke weed, I get paranoid as fuck on that shit. So there's no point in me even trying that. I mean, I wish I, I wish it worked, but you know, um, nonetheless though, I think that like a lot of people, they start out like drinking just to get fucked up and they don't really realize like the slippery slope that that shit runs, you know? And, and instead, if you think about it, it's like, okay, like I'm utilizing this beer to relax, like legitimately like relax at the end of my day after everything is done. If they think about it like that in terms of what that is, then it can work for you. The problem is though, is that everybody kind of th sees drinking as like a day thing. Like, you know, oh, like I'm going to go get fucked up today and then not remember exactly what the fuck I just did tomorrow instead yeah. of using it yep. as a tool, you know, like that's the problem that a lot of people have. People, I think my, my girlfriend's family put it really well. Um, they, uh, they drink to socialize. Yes. Like they, they sip on their, like they'll have a literal shot glass that they'll sip on the whole night. Mm -hmm. It's like they drink to socialize, not drink to blackout. And yes. I mean, if, and that's, that's a, definitely a good way to look at it. Like I don't, like I don't say don't drink alcohol ever, but if you do, just do it responsibly. 
Absolutely. I was guilty of it. I felt like I used to live in Austin, dude. <laughs> the place is full of people just chugging beers and drinks like all the time. Um, but yeah, c- kind of coming back to that whole point though. Um, I believe like, yeah, guys should have a five-year plan. And also you said that you need to take action. Manifestation takes action. And a lot of people in the day, they're like praying, they're like, Oh, like uh, $5 million, you know, show up in my bank account. And like, yet, yeah, like, it's almost like when you do that, you're met with an action inside of your mind that you should partake in. And if you don't participate in that action, you will never receive it, right? Like I want to build a YouTube channel. I manifested the fuck out of this shit. I was like, I want a YouTube channel. I want to eventually like interview people like of high caliber. I want to eventually grow this channel to where it's huge. And the thing is, is like, I, I wanted that for such a long time, but I just like wouldn't make the account. And I would like make excuses on like why I couldn't do it. Oh, I'm focusing on my physique right now. Oh, I'm focusing on you know, work right now. Oh, I just, I work too much, whatever it is. It's like, no, like I just truly didn't fucking want it at that time. And I think, you know, the second that I was like, fuck this shit, I'm making an account like today, you know, I'm making an account and I'm uploading whatever I fucking, (laughs) whatever the first video is that I get on camera and I start talking about is what the channel is going to be about. Because I feel like at the end of the day, it's all about like, just, just doing something, you know, like you may not know exactly what it is or exactly what the plan is, But the other thing too is like, I was watching all these YouTubers like do exactly what I wanted to do. And I was like, I want to manifest this. I want to learn from these people. And I was learning, you know, and I still learn. I still watch YouTube today as like entertainment or like a knowledge base, right? But at the end of the day, like I got, I'm guilty of sitting there watching back to back to back to back YouTube videos. And like, I was just, in the hole of just like not taking action. But yet I was like, why isn't my life changing? You know, I truly believe you have to have a plan and you have to take action for that. To add on to that, I want to say something real quick is you got to also provide value. True. Like I've talked to a lot of people and I've seen a lot of things and people can see through the bullshit real fast. But if you're providing something educational, whether it's like, talking about life or actual school, like if they can get something out of it, they'll return to it because it's something that can help them better themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that's my goal with the channel, right? Like I only, I, I usually would just like post it to like all my social medias and like have everybody that I know follow it. But like this one has been different. Like I've like, honestly, I've been keeping it kind of like a secret and like, I only want to like give out this YouTube to people who like genuinely want to watch me and like genuinely like me as a person who I am. And I want to give advice to guys, you know, it may not always be the best advice. I may not exactly know exactly what I'm going to say on that day, but this is also what I want to do too, is I want to interview you guys like you who are genuinely want to help other guys. Like we're, you know, have a lot of things to say about, you know, um, success and motivation, masculinity, just being an overall fucking better, better man. Cause honestly, bro, like you're killing it, dude. Like you're like fucking, you're like Brad Pitt level right now, dog. Like, <laughs> I <laughs> wish on, I got the modeling. You're, you know, you're on, you're on some good shit, dude. It's a, it's a work in progress, man. Just like everything in life. And I yeah. mean, we all have our our issues. Like, I, I, I definitely don't live a perfect life. I have things I have to work on. But as long as you're just focusing on yourself and trying to be a better person than the day before, I think we'll go far in life. I agree. So, um, to wrap things up. So, you said something about a five year plan. What is your Five year plan. What do you what do you got going on the next five years? What do you want to achieve? Plan. For me, I personally I don't like sharing my ideas until they really go into action, but I'll let you know what kind of my yeah, my good. goals are. Yeah. Um we can kind as, of put the veil over it just to protect it. <laughs> no. As I uh, as I mentioned earlier, I I was like I'm in the process of transitioning from the property management side to actually selling the properties. Um, that's like my long-term goal. My five-year plan is to be able to get my license. Um, and I have, I have a very good mentor. Like I mentioned early, earlier in this podcast, get a mentor, um, cause they will help inspire you and guide you in the right path. And that's what I have with my real estate journey right now is I have a great mentor in that industry who is, uh, very high up there and very knowledgeable. Um, but my, my plan is to get my license, sell my houses. And then something that's very popular right now is, um, buying your own properties, Airbnb being them out. That's something that I really want to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, but in addition to that, I also want to take my modeling career as far as I can get it. Yeah. Um, and I know, I mean, not, I guess there are models that do real estate. 
So yeah. it's, it's it's interesting to kind of see how those, that dynamic play out. Um, yeah. I think with the are, same same plan that you're doing with modeling, I'm like kind of touching the waters on bodybuilding, whether or not I want to like compete compete dude, go for it that's something i've always yeah, wanted to do is compete too but i i always want i, I really want to stay natural and i don't want to yeah feel i feel that i feel that wholeheartedly i i'm kind of i'm kind of nervous about it because i'm like i don't know should, should i get on this fucking trt and all this shit you know like but at the same time like i'm I like i have enough cojones you know to to at least try something once and if i fucking like it then i continue on and kind of see where it goes from there but like honestly again take the action fucking jump i mean you, you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take so at least take it and see wayne, where you wayne gretzky <laughs> <laughs> exactly hell yeah bro well this is fucking this has been a fun interview bro i'm probably gonna wrap this up but um if you could leave guys with two lessons okay one how can they live a more exciting life and b what is the final bit of information that you'd like to give to guys just genuinely about life and what you have to leave with them. Yeah. Don't compare yourself to other people. Um, cause I like, I, I definitely follow people on social media for inspiration, but I know that they're in a different path than, than I am in life. And there's quote, I guess that you're in a different chapter in your book and you're not in the same book as them. Um, so just don't compare yourself, just focus on yourself, um, and be the best that you can be. Um, and then what's the second question? How do you guys live just like a more exciting life and be able to step out of their comfort zones to just enjoy life a little bit more while they're on this journey of, you know, becoming a better man? I mean, just taking that first step for anything will speak volumes. I think that a lot of people, they're like, what if, what if my parents think this? What if my teachers see this or my, my spouse or whatever? But I think just taking that first step and being consistent with it, um, consistency and motivation and dedication are three words to live by. Um, and I okay. think if you guys all follow that and kind of implement that in your own life, you'll be better for it. Hell yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Chance Krimert, my guys. Thank you, man, for honestly joining me today. This was sick. Um, yeah, man. It honestly, went a uh, pretty well honestly i didn't i wasn't sure about how everything was going to look on here and and so i'm i'm excited for the video to upload um okay, man. i gotta see if i'm gonna edit this thing out but um nonetheless guys follow him on instagram uh, again what, what was it one more time it was chance Krimert. that's c-h-a-n-c-e space k-r-i-m-m-e-r-t i'm always on there hell yeah well guys if you got any value out of today's video put a comment down below like the video Subscribe to the fucking channel. Please do whatever the fuck it needs to do and watch the next video. I got an interview with my boy Goka Lifestyle coming up. You guys don't want to miss it. You'll get tons more value out of it. And I appreciate you guys. Have a great day.